my sound on, okay? Thank you. In the All-American Hymn Book, please, number 145, Wonderful Story of Love. <clears throat> Oh, I want to see him. Look upon his face. Is that your desire? One of these days. Amen. What a, what a day that will be. Uh, all of our songs today are out of the All-American Church hymnal here. So uh, 167 in the All-American. Uh, as I journey through the land, singing as I go. I hope you're singing if you're saved today as you go through this world and let people wonder what in the world's going on with you. Amen. 167. Let's sing the, uh, the chorus on the last stanza. Okay, we'll sing with all four stanzas and get the whole story that's given here and then we'll sing the chorus. Thank you. 
to see him look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Well, I trust you're saved today. That's what you're looking forward to the rejoicing to come. There's not a lot in this world to rejoice about, it seems like, but uh, that's okay. This isn't our home. We're just passing through. Amen. And so we're uh, looking forward to the home that's been prepared for us in heaven if you're saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Number 58. kind of new to some of you. Uh, we don't sing out of this songbook a whole lot, but it has a lot of good songs in it that aren't in the other one. But when I see the blood, I will pass over you. We're going to be looking at that this morning as we look at Bible Memorial Days. We have a Memorial Day here, Decoration Day, originally called, as we saw last hour, and 
So we have Bible Memorial Days also that we need to remember. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for these wonderful songs that have been written to glorify you and bring these things into our lives, Lord. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for bringing these out today, Lord, and for those that would see and hear these uh, messages, Lord, that you just bless each one for your glory. And Father, we thank you for salvation in Jesus Christ alone, and that when you see the blood, Lord, uh, you will pass over. How wonderful it is. We thank you for all these things, this remembrance, this memorial, Lord, that you've given us and you've given to Israel and now to everyone, Lord, uh, in the world. And we love you. Amen. Let's take our, so our song books, yeah, our, our Bible books, <laughs> our read books, okay. Take these books, the Bible, and let's turn to Exodus, Exodus. Memorial Days in the Bible. There are so many Memorial Days in the Bible. And we looked at the memorable uh, one in Joshua 3 and 4 last hour. And now we're going to look in Exodus. So open your Bible to Exodus. Exodus chapter 12. We'll be starting in Exodus chapter 12. I know there's got to be a 12 in my Exodus somewhere here. <laughs> I found it. Thank you. Just as I saw 11, I knew where to go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Exodus chapter 12. Uh, we thank the Lord for his word. And uh, looking at some of the memorial days, let's look at this one that's most important. Seeing the blood. And this was started the Passover, of course. And if you know your Bible, you know that uh, that all started. And then uh, it ended with the, today's ordinance of the Lord's Supper, remembering the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, all from the Passover, uh, the picture that we have, the picture of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament as he came through there with them and then became, uh, went to Calvary and paid the final debt of the sin debt of the world. How wonderful it is. So Exodus chapter 12, uh, we're going to begin there. I have uh, there at the top of the page a couple, part of a verse there in 12, uh, 11. It is the Lord's Passover. And verse 14, And this day shall be unto you for memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Now, of course, that was given to the Jews and the, the Passover that they are to celebrate every year. Uh, there are a few that, that do it, maybe not even knowing why they do it anymore, but uh, whatever it is, that's God's command that they shall do that. And we'll see later as we look in the New Testament, uh, the memorial we have today for believing Jesus Christ and remembering him. So in Exodus chapter 12, I also put down there again in numbers at the bottom of the uh, of that page, that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Uh, these things are done that we might remember God and that he's a holy God and he wants us to be like him. Uh, <clears throat> so let's look at uh, chapter 12 now. We'll begin there in Exodus chapter 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, this month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Uh, now that would be a bit in uh, March, April time frame. And uh, this was all based on the, on the moon when they started their 30-day uh, months and so forth that they had and how it's adjusted. But we're not going into that today. Uh, so the month, a bit, and, uh, beginning in March and the end of March into April there. Verse 3, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. <clears throat> every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep and from the goats. Ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. 
And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. It shall take of the blood, they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head with his legs and with the pertinence thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. Thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and ye shall haste, eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Uh, so the Lord is showing here now the Passover that he is passing over those of his chosen people that obey him. Uh, notice they had to obey him because if they didn't put the blood on their lentils and on their doorposts, uh, they're gonna die. Somebody's gonna die in that household. Uh, but by obeying him, the Lord passed over that household. And I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And we got to remember that. God is still the Lord. He's the Lord of heaven and earth. Uh, he is still in charge. He is the maker of heaven and earth, and he knows how it runs and how it should run, uh, even without the curse of man, okay? And so he will take care of it. He will take care of his children. He has promised that. Uh, verse 13, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Uh, what, uh, you see where that song just came from, the chorus and the song that we just sang. Uh, he instituted that. Um, when I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. Uh, when God sees the blood, listen, when God sees the blood of Jesus Christ applied to you and your sins are gone, he sees you in the new condition. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. How wonderful it is to know that God forgets your sins because they're paid for in full. Verse 14, this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Oh, this is Memorial Day. Well, this ought to be a memorial, right? Remembering this day. <clears throat> this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And so they are commanded to keep this as one of the yearly feasts. Seven days shall ye eat uh, unleavened bread. Even the first day ye shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Uh, God's serious about what he does. If you don't obey him, if they didn't obey him, they were going to die. Uh, and we've seen that so often in the, as we've studied the Old Testament. And if they're, they're disobedience and they're murmuring, complaining, and God destroyed them. <clears throat> don't mess with God just believe him and love him and he'll love you isn't that wonderful I mean a God with the force that he has a God who uh, is the maker of mankind and he just wants you to love him yes. through Jesus Christ you can do that he loved us uh, we love him because he first loved us so he loved us now we can love him what a wonderful salvation a great blessing he's given us uh, verse 16, and in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done for, of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at even ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses, for whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. 
And so we've seen that it's the Lord's Passover. We've seen that it is a memorial for him, in verse 14. And then we saw that it's an ordinance forever to Israel. Let's go on, verse 20. You shall eat nothing leavened, in all your habitations shall ye eat unleavened bread. Uh, then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lentil and the two side posts with the blood that is in the, lent, uh, in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. <clears throat> now, what's going to happen? Verse 23 tells you, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. See, God controls these things. God's in charge of the destroyer. Uh, you just need to be on God's side and believe him and trust him and take the given way that he's given for you to be reconciled back to him from your sinful state through Jesus Christ, the shed blood of Calvary. It's done, it's finished, complete. He wants to be your friend and your God. Verse 24, ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. There it is again, they're supposed to just keep on this thing, and it shall come to pass when ye are become the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised, that ye shall keep this service. So they're supposed to keep doing that. Now we just saw in Joshua how they were entering the land and yet they were to keep the Passover uh, all their years there in the land. And God had them cross Jordan just like he did the Red Sea on dry ground. Uh, verse 28, shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? Uh, why are you doing this? What is this that you're doing? Why are you keeping this? Uh, why is it unleavened? Why do we use unleavened bread in the Lord's Supper and unleavened juice in the, in the uh, Lord's Supper? Uh, all comes from the Bible, from the Word of God. Verse 27, that ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshiped. When the destroyer passes over, it's time to worship, isn't it? And be, thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ, the destroyer will pass over you. He has no power on you. Uh, you are in God's family by adoption, and nobody can touch you in Christ Jesus. And so we just need to bow our heads and worship that holy God, that one that has made all this possible for mankind. Uh, and yet we see that few want to even know about it. Few even want to hear. Few, what are the few here? I mean, where do you go? You go where you, people go where they have itching ears. They have uh, the things that they, uh, uh, that they just desire in their life instead of what God desires for them. Uh, and so we need to realize God is the God of heaven. He's the one to be worshiped and adored. Verse 28, and the children of Israel uh, <clears throat> went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. It came to pass at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. Um, nobody escaped. Only the blood would keep the destroyer from killing someone in that house. Verse 30, and Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up, and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go. Serve the Lord as ye have said. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Verse 33, and the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we all be dead men. 
And so many of the Egyptians and the people that uh, Israel had served, uh, they, they saw what was going on and they wanted to believe in God. They wanted to go with uh, the Israelites. And so it was that uh, many went. They thought that uh, Egypt was destroyed. What do we want to hang around here for when we got something else that God might give us? So here in verse 34, the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. They borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver, jewels of gold, and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. And so whatever they wanted, the Egyptians were willing to give them. Just take it and get out of here. <laughs> And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 on foot, that were men beside children. Uh, so it could easily have been a, a couple of million people there that were pulling out of Egypt. Verse 38, a mixed multitude went up also with them in flocks and herds, even very much cattle. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough, which they brought forth out of Egypt, for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victual. Now in verse 40, now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. And all this is a remembrance now, remember. The Lord is uh, given this for them to remember all this time. Now we're not gonna go into the years and, and where and how it was served and all that, uh, right now, just take it, uh, this word is what it says. In verse 41, it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is the night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. Uh, this great salvation from Egyptian slavery. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, This is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. And so he's given the instructions here, the ordinance of the Passover. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Uh, that's God's uh, immigration plan, isn't it? <laughs> you believe on him, you come into him, and he will accept you. Uh, we see that a number of times in scriptures. You look at uh, Rahab being brought into the line of Christ. And you, you see how uh, Rachel uh, came in to the end. Why? Be believing on the God of Israel, the true maker of heaven and earth, the true God. Uh, <clears throat> so verse 45, a foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall ye break a bone thereof. All the congregation of Israel shall keep it, and when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover of the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no circumcised uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. So uh, once they were, had followed God's plan, they were just like one of the Israelites and could be partake in the things of the Israelites. Verse 49, one law shall be to him that is home born and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Uh, if they are of belief in God and have come as a stranger to them and are now part of them, uh, then it's all, they're all under the same rule. And, you know, it's that way with our salvation in Jesus Christ, isn't it? Uh, if you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and are saved, uh, then you're one with all the rest of the believers in the world in Christ. And so uh, we share the same thing. And Paul makes that plain as he dis discusses that uh, the difference between the, there's no difference between the the Jews and the Gentiles in the Church of God uh, were all one. Verse 51, and, uh, well, 50 again, thus did all the children of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. Uh, so just as uh, the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron and the children then followed, and so now they're following. And it came to pass the self 
same day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies. Uh, so the night, the night of the Lord is to be observed by the children of Israel and their generations. And so they continue that uh, on and on. And we see this is an ordinance of the Passover, an ordinance as to be observed of all the children of Israel and their generations. Now in Exodus chapter 13, uh, let's look at the first few verses here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Sanctify unto me all the firstborn, whosoever openeth the womb among the children of Israel, both of men and of beasts, it is mine. And of course, to sanctify is to set free, to cut loose, separate. Uh, verse 12 says that, thou sh that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix and every firstling that cometh of the beast which thou hast. The males shall be the Lord's, okay? Uh, so you see how sanctify is described and it's, it, you can see it right there. You don't even have to go to a dictionary if you don't know what it's talking about because just a few verses later it says it's set apart, set them apart. That's what to sanctify is. And you need to be set apart to God's service if you're a Christian. Uh, <clears throat> Verse 3, And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this 